Good morning. This uh, hearing of the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee will come to order. Uh, the subject of the hearing today is the state of the health insurance markets. Uh, I want to thank all of our witnesses for, for your thoughtful testimony, for traveling here. Uh, it's a beautiful city. You, got, you brought beautiful weather, by the way. I can, it's not quite as hot and, and humid as it normally is. But I re really do appreciate uh, you coming here on a very important subject. Um, I mean, the truth of the matter is, the, the reason I decided to run for the United States Senate was because of the health care law. I, I come from the private sector. I understand marketplaces. I understand what works, what doesn't work. And I was very concerned about the, the very harmful effect on real people that the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act would, would actually result in. And I think it's coming true. The, the problem that uh, certainly I think all of us have had in really evaluating uh, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act is the complexity of the data. There's not just one overall metric that you can kind of point to and say, hey, it, you know, it's not working. Uh, there are some metrics, I think some pretty powerful ones. Uh, so you know, absent that very simplistic type of metric to, to evaluate uh, the success or failure, um, I think probably the best way of doing it is the way you'd evaluate any kind of product or any kind of program. I come from the private sector. You know, we, do uh, capital expenditure uh, reviews and, and managers would say, okay, this is what we expect if we invest this kind of money. So I think maybe the best way to take a look uh, and start out the hearing with my opening statement, which by the way, I've got a written opening statement. I'd like to have that entered in the record. I'll enter yours too if you want me to. Um, it is literally to take a look at what the promises were made and how did those promises, were those promises were f fulfilled or not. And there were three primary promises made when People were considering, debating, discussing, and, and finally passing uh, the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act. Uh, the first one was, was, was pretty famous, um, and I'll quote. This is from President Obama, and he made this promise 31 times. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. You're going to be able to keep it. Well, uh, there are all kinds of figures, again, how many millions of Americans actually lost a health care plan. I, I've seen them as high as I think it's maybe 8 million, but you know, let, let's, let's be conservative and go to the Urban Institute. Uh, their, their most recent study said there are about 2.6 million Americans lost their health insurance plan. Um, in Wisconsin, uh, certainly we had something called the high risk pool. Uh, everybody that wrote Anybody involved in the writing of the Patient Protection Affordable Care Plan knew high-risk plans were going to be eliminated. So I think there are more than 20,000 Wisconsinites that were on the high-risk pool. And the, again, the authors of, of Obamacare, I'll just start calling it Obamacare, they knew those individuals were going to lose their health insurance plans. I had a, a couple early on, with the, you know, right, this was actually in fall of 2008, call me in a panic. His wife had stage four, I believe, is lung cancer. He was suffering and being treated for prostate cancer. They obviously were losing their high-risk pool plan. They were paying about $700, $700 a month, $767 per month for insurance in the high-risk pool, which is very competitive. That's, you know, that's what, that, that, that was a, pro, pro, a program that actually worked very well in Wisconsin. Um, the cheapest, first of all, they tried getting on healthcare.gov almost 40 times and couldn't because that, was a disaster when it first was, was trying to be uh, initiated. Finally called our office seeking help. Now, we, we did guide them to a couple of the insurance companies that were going to be on those exchanges. The, the cheapest plan they could find was $1,400. But again, that couple lost the health care plan, contrary to President Obama's repeated promise that that wouldn't happen. The second guarantee. If you like, well, that means, again, quote President Obama, that means that no matter how we reform health care, we will keep this promise to the American public, American people, this promise. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. I don't think anybody would stand, you know, stand up and say that that's been true. People have lost their doctors. We have a couple in Marinette. Uh, who obviously have lost their doctor. And I just, want to, I just want to read the quick quote here. The only plan they could afford under Obamacare meant they'd lose the doctor they've had for over 15 years. And their quote was, now I have to see a physician I have never even met. Broken promise number two. Uh, I think the third 
most famous promise was as a candidate, President Obama repeated, in an Obama administration, we'll lower premiums by up to $2,500 for a typical family per year. Um, the truth is, back in 2008, when he was running as a candidate, according to the Kaiser Foundation, uh, the average family was paying about $12,680 per year. The latest figure by the Kaiser Foundation, an average family is paying $18,142 per year. That's a $5,462 increase since President Obama made that promise. It's supported 43%. And you, you can look year by year. Now, obviously, that's the largest increase because health care continued to increase. But even from 2013, the implementation, the year before implementation of Obamacare, it was 16,351, and today it's 18,142. That's still a $1,791 average increase across the board. So obviously, the average family has not seen a $2,500 per year reduction in the health care. And again, I've got specific examples. Uh, Janice from Spooner, Wisconsin wrote me and said that prior to Obamacare, she was paying $276 per, per month for health care. Her latest quote was $787 per month. That's a 185% increase. And we, we had a, a woman, a, a young woman who, a young, young mother, she was a nurse. Her husband uh, operated in the HVAC industry. They, they both were working, they loved their jobs. But because of the increase in premiums, they went from about $500 per month to $700 to $1,200 per month. A $700 increase, that's a 140% increase. The only way they could afford insurance, and they weren't getting through their employer, they're having to buy in the individual market. The only way they could afford insurance is if she quit her job so the income was lowered far enough so she could, they could qualify for the subsidy. Broken promise number three. The really sad part about this is this was known. The, the authors, the, the, the people who supported Obamacare had to know that those promises could never be kept. And I just want to quote, quote a number of quotes by Jonathan Gruber, who was certainly one of the individuals involved in the, the authoring of Obamacare. PolitiFact called him an architect, and one of many architects of Obamacare, paid almost $400,000 by the administration to consult. He was talking about the Cadillac tax. And here's his quote. He said, we just tax the insurance companies. They pass on higher prices. That offsets the tax rate we get, and it ends up being the same thing. And, and here's, here's really the, the important quote. It's a very clever, you know, basic exploitation of the lack of economic understanding of the American voter. He went on to talk about the Cadillac tax. And he said, quote, and this is Jonathan Gruber, one of the architects of Obamacare. Somebody knew what he was doing. Said, quote, Americans were too stupid to understand the difference. He also said, the lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever, but basically that really was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. Now, that's a pretty sad state of affairs, but that's the truth. That's what happened. Now, I just wonder, just kind of ask the question, we've got uh, some agencies in the federal government, one set up under Dodd-Frank, called the Consumer, Protection, or Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. We also have the FTC that take a look at consumer fraud, try and protect consumers. I just wonder, just kind of wondering, I wonder what they would do, the kind of enforcement action they would take against an insurance company that sold a product, an insurance product, that said, hey, listen, once you buy this thing, you know, you're going to be able to renew this forever. Because if you like this plan, you can keep it. And then in the fine print, well, that's not true. In addition, said, hey, this insurance plan allows you to keep your doctor, period. You're going to be able to keep your doctor. But then the fine print said, well, not if that doctor isn't part of the network that we're going to cover. And three, that if you buy this health care plan, whatever you're paying last year, your premium is going to go down by $2,500, and instead your premiums went up $1,700 or $5,000. I just wonder what these federal regulatory agencies would do to an insurance company that engaged, and let me be very clear what this administration did. It was a massive consumer fraud. 
That's what it was. That's what Obamacare, Obamacare is a massive consumer fraud. And we're going to be taking a look at that uh, today. I, I, and I'll probably be asking the, the uh, Deputy Insurance Commissioner from Wisconsin kind of his thoughts on how we'd handle that in Wisconsin during my questioning. Uh, so again, I want to thank the witnesses for coming. This should be a very interesting hearing. I think it's a very important hearing. Because this Obamacare law is costing American taxpayers a whole lot of money. We all want, we all want people to be covered by health care. We all want people to have access to be able to get high quality insurance. But we didn't have to completely make, remake the insurance and health care markets to try and uh, fill that gap and help those individuals who we all want to help. And I think we're going to see that uh, this, this is not working. Those promises were certainly not lived up to. And so, again, I want to thank the hearing, the, the, the witnesses, and I'll turn it over to our ranking member, Senator Carper.